according to the cloud. Come on in, make yourselves at home. Come on in. You know what? We didn't talk about this, but I might try to make us go live here. There we go. Real talk. Seasons. Season one, episode one. There we go. That's what we're going to call it. Let's go public. <laughs> Come on in, everybody. Make yourself at home. Let's go to the group. There we go. All right, going live, live in Facebook. Here we go. Okay, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. What's going on? Just one minute. Hope you guys are ready. Right, Brian's drinking his coffee. When he drinks his coffee, man, he is ready to go. Turn off the afternoon. Got to keep pace with Chris Welton and Jeremy Bowers. Oh, I'll tell you what. Hey, Good Chris, luck. Hi, client. Challenged me to recruit off. Oh, well, the pictures are two. Oh. Your client challenged yeah, you to a recruit one, off? Two. Is that what you said? Yep. Drew nice. Sports. Yep. Yeah, so I think I think that'd be fun. Yeah. I, I, want to, I want to get on this on this recruit off. Let's do it. Let's do it. How many how many do we have to recruit just to even be a part of it? Well, it, the minimum's two producing agents a month, but it's going to be from his backyard. So I said, send me your roster so I can beat you in your own backyard. <laughs> oh, love it. All right, make a co-host. Okay, everybody, let's get started. Coaches, you guys ready to get started? Okay. Yes, sir. All right, let's do this. Everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are on this Zoom right now, it is about time to do what we call is real talk. Real talk inside the I Love Coaching world stands for this as it relates to you listeners. That's relevant. That's authentic. That's, ex let's say, R-E. No, relevant, experiential, authentic learning is what you guys are going to do over the next hour. We're going to do this through industry updates of real estate. We're going to do this through lending updates. We're going to do in some winning strategies that these coaches are talking about. And you guys are going to get some real talk from us coaches. Now, I want to set an expectation. The expectation is whatever questions you guys have while, have while we're going through this, put them in the chat, please. Put them in the chat and we will definitely get to those questions. If this is something you guys are really liking, put it in the chat and tell us something good. So I want to do this before we start. We've got myself, Adam Roach. I'm here in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm excited to be leading the I Love Coaching Company along with all my other coaches and leaders on here. I'm going to have them introduce themselves, where they're from, and what their superpower is. So, Kim, we're going to start off with you. Who are you, where you're from, and what's your superpower? Okay, so I am Kim Rogney. Clearly, I am from Wisconsin because I have a scarf on. <laughs> um and let's see i am with i love coaching my superpower today that i would like to share is that i can rewrite just about any poem or book to make it real estate style i have rewritten twas the night before christmas you can find it on youtube if you want that's what i have for you very cool all right mr chris welton you're up I'm Chris Welton. I'm an I Love Coaching Coach, and I'm also the Vice President of Sales for Certified Mortgage Planner. Planners, I am a lender out of Lake Mary, Florida. I don't have a scarf on. The sun's coming in the back. It's a beautiful 75 degrees outside. And my superpower is I'm living difference. Mm -hmm. I have a living difference, and that's my superpower. Yes, it is. Mr. Jerry Bowers, talk to us. My name is Jeremy Bowers. Um, I am with I Love Coaching. I'm one of the coaches. I'm a real estate entrepreneur. I'm involved in real estate sales, buying brokerages, um, real estate investments, buying properties, renovating them, a company called We Clean List, anything real estate, title companies. My superpower is I know how to multiply money. You make X here, how can we triple that money? And I can figure out the path very quickly on how to do that for people. 
Gotcha. And, and that has nothing to do with him living in Jersey or that area and laundering money. It has nothing to do with multi <laughs> Not at all. No, no. I'm joking there. Mr. Brian Leverett, talk to us, brother. Hey, what's up, everybody? Brian Leverett. I am uh, the owner of Brian Leverett Whole Life and Business Coaching, powered by I Love Coaching. I'm here in St. Charles, Missouri. And currently, my superpower is going big and failing hard, but failing fast. Um, I like to do things that are outside my comfort zone. I like to challenge my clients to do the same so that we can reverse engineer what we're learning and end up applying that to the success that we have. So right now it's failing hard and fast, Adam. Nice job. And say the best for last. He's got the best hair on the planet. Mr. Troy Marsh, are you on here? Where are you? There he is. Hey, I even got a haircut today for you. <laughs> um, my name is Troy Marsh, Columbus, Ohio. I'm an I Love Coaching coach. I would say my superpower is is numbers. Really, I love numbers. Uh, I use that in investing and my real estate business as well as coaching. Gotcha. All right, excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so Troy, here, let's do this. Guys, we're going to go right into the real estate market update. Mr. Troy Marsh is going to lead us through this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this more of a collaborative type thing with with Troy and the coaches. So Troy's going to lead this and then we'll engage with Troy as we go through it. So Troy, let me uh, allow you to share screen here. And got it. And the floor is yours, my friend. Take us away. All right, give me one second here. Let me get on, this. I'm going gonna, gonna to allow spotlighting. Hold on 2 seconds. Okay, got it. There we go. All right, can you guys see that? Yep. Sweet, let me find my mouse. And... Maybe. All right, here we go. So I'm going to try to kind of run through this pretty quickly. You guys feel free to interrupt me. Um, anybody can interrupt me, but I'm going to fly through the numbers a little bit. Um, I would say, and then Chris is going to follow up with some information on interest rates and mortgages, which is a, a huge part of the numbers conversation when it comes to real estate. So what I'm going to do is run through inventory and selling trends. Um, as well as touch briefly on interest rates, talk about inflation's effect on those rates, as well as the, the real estate industry. And then I'm going to touch at the end just a couple of points that I feel like you guys can take, take these numbers and explain to your clients um, and make them feel comfortable. Because my belief is, is that in the absence of fact, emotion rules the day. And when emotion rules the day and people are uncomfortable and nervous, they tend to not make any decision at all because that feels like the safest thing to do. So here we go. Um, unfortunately, I, it must have to do with the holiday, but all the December numbers are not out yet anywhere. Um, so unfortunately, we're looking at the national numbers through the end of November. I'm going to add a few um, kind of bullet points, I guess. I'm looking at local numbers that are obviously more current than that. Um, we're definitely seeing a few different trends, so I'm hopeful that those December numbers will be out soon. But we've got out active listings. The biggest thing I wanted to say about active listings is they're definitely up year over year. But certainly, if we look back, this is going all the way back to June of 2012, you can see that from a historical perspective, we're still in an amazing market when it comes to supply and demand. Um, and so obviously we'll be looking at active listings to continue to increase a lot more before we start to get worried about moving into a traditional buyer's market. National Association of Realtors says that a buyer's mark, that a balanced market is four to six months of inventory. And so we'll get into the national numbers, but right now most markets are still sitting anywhere between two and four. And so we're still in historically what would be considered a balanced market. Pending sales, same story, definitely trending in the wrong direction through November of last year. Um, we started to see them tick back up 
though, um, in December, after the interest rates kind of leveled out and then started dipping back down in November. And then here locally, we are actually up um, pending sales for the first 10 days of January compared to the first 10 days of January last year. And so I think um, that's been a, that was a trend that started in December in terms of um, being lower or being, I guess, less negative year over year compared to uh, November. And I think we're going to see those trends start to play out nationally when the December data comes out. And part of the reason um, for the fact that active listings are not as high as they could be given the significant drop in pendings is the fact that new listings are down as well. Um, so basically, the easiest way to think of this is there's a lot fewer sellers that are willing to sell their 3% rate and buy a 7% rate. And so the new listings has offset some of the pain of the drop in pendings and solds. And so we're seeing that I've got a few local markets here. And then the red line is the national trend line over the last couple of years. So you can see that it's, that it's also lower. Days on market, um, definitely an example of local markets. Um, you can see Chicago definitely has, uh, has taken the biggest hit in terms of days on market. I'm thinking there's probably a, a data story there. I don't know. Kim, you're from Chicago, right? Or you're near Chicago. Do you have any idea why their numbers bumped up so significantly at the beginning of last year? No, I don't. No. I'd have to check. I'm in Milwaukee, but I'm okay. not really sure on this that. This seems like a, an anomaly to a degree. But either yeah. way, um, days on market nationally still below 20. Again, on that comment, I always like to say you call up any seller from 2016 and ask them if they would be cool selling their house in two weeks and they all would have been jumping for joy. So I think creating perspective for sellers is important and then finding uh, finding reasons why that could benefit them, like maybe they can do a home sale contingency on a purchase before they put their house on the market versus, ha versus having to take the risk. So some of those days on market allow that. Um, months of supply. So this is another indication. Again, when we try to put things into perspective, if we look back to, I went back as far as 2018 here. Again, the red line is the national trend line and then threw in a few um, popular areas, Columbus, Ohio, where I'm at, um, Phoenix, Arizona, and then also Charleston, South Carolina. I mean, again, going back as recently as 2019, Charleston was up over six months of inventory. And so I know I have a couple clients that I coach out of Charleston. And even though they're singing the blues, their months of inventory is still only just above three months of inventory. So almost half of what it was just back in 2019, right before the pandemic. So again, I think if you don't have this data to talk to your sellers about, in particular sellers, but also buyers getting people off the fence, you know, the emotion of the day and the headlines of the day are certainly that the sky is falling, that real estate's never been in a worse position. It's the second worst market since the Great Depression. You know, that I've seen that a million times. And the reality is it's the second worst market when you look at year over year changes. But when you look at the last five years of data, 2021 and 2022, the beginning of 2022, those were the anomalies in the market. And after this year, we can be done comparing to what arguably might be the best year that's ever happened in real estate and start looking at reality. And when you look back at reality, you start to see that it's really not as bad as, as they're saying, or as the headline state, at least. Um, so this just goes back even further, and you can see the months of supply just was worse the further back you go. Um, and then this is zooming in um, a little bit closer, and you can see that just here at the end of the year last year, the months of supply has already started to level off in most markets. Um, and again, like I said, that's actually in most markets when we, when December data comes out here in the next week week or two, I think we're going to see in most markets that supply actually dipped in December, which it does always because of the holidays. And so we're going to go back to more of that seasonal trend. 
Median sales price, again, people would love to, to act like the sky is falling with this. And certainly the trend is not going in the right direction. But also when we look back um, to 2019, and actually if we went back further than this, you would see that, that seasonality happens every single year. So during COVID, the, the rhythm of it got a little bit messed up. Um, but you can see if we look back to 2019, which was the, the last non-COVID year, you have your spike in the spring and summer, and then in, uh, at medium prices tend to drop through the winter months and then slowly tick up during spring, drop, and it even happened during COVID. It just wasn't as pronounced as normal. And the highs were so high that nobody paid attention to it, but seasonality still existed, and it will continue to exist forever just because of the demand that drops off during the fall and winter season. Um, this will be my last stat slide, I believe. Um, and I thought this was interesting. This was a Redfin uh, graphic. Um, but even despite the higher interest rates, still nationally with a 5% down payment, your average mortgage payment is about 2000 to, to, or I'm sorry, 100 to $120 less than the average rent payment. And obviously that's not factoring any, any kind of depreciation or depreciation or write-offs that you get on the tax deduction side of things or any, any appreciation that you're missing out on with that. So my firm belief is that until we see the rent numbers either equal to or below the mortgage payment, that you're still gonna continue to see really strong demand in, in the real estate market. Um, and that any immense periods of slowdown like we saw in the fall of this year in terms of seeing 25 to 30 percent fewer sales is just going to really create pent up demand for when rates rates do drop and this affordability gap gets larger. And this definitely varies. Um, if you guys go to Redfin, you can see it. Just type in Redfin data into Google. But this little drop down right here, you can go and pick any market in the whole U.S., so whatever your market is, and you can go look at that and see there were some like Atlanta, Georgia, it was like $600 a month difference between the average rent versus the average um, price with a 5% down payment or average monthly payment after a 5% down payment. So I thought that was really interesting. All right. Anybody have any questions before we jump quickly into inflation and then uh, jump over to Chris? No. Sure. Cool. Real, real yeah. quick, when you when you uh, prepared for this and looked at that, was there anything that jumped out at you that said, "Gosh, I need I need to go talk with my clients about this," or I need, "I'm excited to go share this tomorrow"? What was there anything specific that jumped out at you? Yeah, I mean, as you know, I do this often, and so um, there's not a lot of surprise in the data. I mean, data doesn't change, but I would say the the general theme should be if you're not already talking, and I do have a slide at the end with kind of those talking points, but the general theme is is two things. Number one, that the media can, well, anybody can spin numbers any way that they want. And so oftentimes when you read the headline versus the actual article that the person wrote, they don't even match. Um, and so it's our job as agents to be the local economist of choice and to, to, to talk to our clients about what the data actually means. And so if you allow your clients to focus on the year over year changes, they're gonna believe that this is the worst market or the second worst market since the Great Depression. But if you actually put it into perspective and compare the median prices, for example, that are really in most markets still above where they were a year ago, and what the amount of equity that people have, um, it's still a really great time to be a real estate seller. Not as good as a year ago, but historically, it's still a great time. And in terms of being a buyer, again, I think, and we'll get to this in a second with interest rates, but I think that a lot of people, at least in our market here locally, and I think it's true in many across the country, this six to 12 month period between last summer and this summer, assuming interest rates do what most experts predict, and that is either stay level or go down. I think as soon as the general public feels comfortable 
that we're in more of a stable environment or a downward trend that people are going to jump back in in a big way and they're going to wish that they would have bought during this time. And when you have the data to back it up instead of just an emotional plea that I promise now is a great time, um, that's what people need to feel comfortable. I've had a couple of clients get off the fence just from talking about this stuff in the last 30 days that were, that were actually buying out their leases in order to buy right now. Yeah, Troy, um, I, 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 I just want to jump in on that real quick because it's our responsibility to fill that narrative gap on what it is they think is happening in the market and what it is the news is telling what's happening in the market. You're all professionals on here. This information is vital to you getting more business and being considered a true expert when you're trying to get the listing or get people off the fence. So go ahead, Troy. I just wanted to jump on. Yeah, and for those of you that are that have taken the time to get on this call, that says one one major thing to me, and that's that you're growth-minded. You believe that you have an opportunity to be better, and your clients are looking for people like you right now. You know, last year they believed, everyone believed, not hopefully not you as an agent, but everyone believed that all you did was stick a sign in the yard. It didn't matter what the agent did and the house was still going to sell for the same amount of money. We are living in an environment right now where the skilled agents that know how to have this conversation, that's who sellers want to work with. They no longer believe, and you can thank the media for that, that anybody can sell their house for any price. Right. Or for the same price. And so this is your opportunity. But if your clients don't know that you know this stuff and you can't even get yourself to the table, that's that's where you have the problem. And the last thing I'll say on that, the, the narrative part, is that we have social media now. In 2008, for those of you that were around during then, the media basically got to make the narrative and we just lived with it. Mm -hmm. Right. You had to have you had to either be really good at mailing and just crushing the phones or you 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 lived with it. Now we have social media. Some of your clients probably spent most of your clients most likely spend more time on social media than they do watching the news. And so you have an opportunity to influence their thinking in a way that didn't exist during the last downturn. And if you're not using it, you're missing out on an opportunity. Yeah, that's good. Hey, before we transition to Chris real quick, I want to ask all the coaches with this type of data, when a client comes to, when a coaching client comes to you that, that's in the real estate space and they say, this market's going to be hard. What do you say in, re in reply? Just out of curiosity. I always ask him what specifically is going to be so hard about this market is the first thing I ask, right? But Troy, what you're presenting here is a list of opportunities in the real story. And if we as real estate professionals can't find the opportunities in the story that may align with our buyer or seller motives, we're, we're selling ourselves. So we're not, uh, to speak to Chris, well, that's our responsibility as fiduciaries is to tell the real story and to align the opportunity with the motivations of our buyer and seller, right? And it's a skills-based market, just like Jess posted. So the separation is in the details. Whether or not you know bits and pieces of this conversation will separate you from the other listing agent, from the other buyer's agent, right? So you can't look at this, uh, to answer your question, Adam, as a list of potential problems. Think about it. I'm just calling out what I think a lot of us think when we look at the market. We can look at this as problematic or we can look at it as opportunistic. Well, I don't think we have the opportunity to look at a list of problems right now. I think we need to look at what the opportunities are, are being presented in this market. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I love that. That's hey, great. Uh, hey, Adam. Hey, guys. Um, I'm dead spot on. Um, Troy, I'm, I'm loving the slides and all the, the, um, the, the data talk. It's funny. I was just speaking with someone today um, in, regard, in our market here in Atlanta. January 1st, 2022, we had 995 expires hit the market. You know what that number was in 2023, the opportunity was. It was 2,500 um, properties that expired. We're in a definitely in a skills-based market, and that's a ton of opportunity because at least 75 or 80% of those, those expires will relist. You know what's your plan of action? That is a huge opportunity. So to answer your question, Adam, I think we have to pull data. You know, find find the opportunity.
for um you know for our clients and share those opportunities with them so that their mindset is in an op, op, um, optimistic way that hey I can I can really thrive and take market share. There's one thing about it is once you take market share, you really don't ever have to give it back. So yeah. it's a great opportunity. Yep. Thanks, Terrell. Good stuff. Great stuff. All right. If you got questions for Troy, put them in the chat because we're now going to transition to Mr. Chris Welton. Coach Chris Welton, you're up, buddy. Bring us right. into the lending world, please. Get ready, everybody. All right. So what I wanted to talk about first real quick on this was we got some data today I wanted to share. I'm not fancy like Troy. I can't put together PowerPoint slides that fast. My director of marketing does that. She's a little busy today. So um, rates dropped week over week by an eighth of a percent to 6.375%. But that's up 2.875% from a year ago. I'm going to repeat that. It's up 2.875% from a year ago. Refis were up 5%. Purchase applications were up half a percent. Sorry, didn't have to turn the phone on. Do not start. So I want to share with you the tools that we are helping our current referral partners with to grow through this time of higher interest rates. So rates dropped week over. Okay, thank you. I see that. The, one of the most powerful things we're doing right now is our 2-1 buy-down. If you're not using a 2-1 buy-down, nobody's talked to you about that yet. I'm going to show you some of the stuff we're doing with it right now. So obviously, we're in a market where we're starting to get some concessions. We're getting some uh, seller credits, at least where I'm at in Florida. This is from a few weeks ago. They're actually from November. This was a 30-year fixed program. The rate was 7.35% at the time. The 2-1 buy down, we could get the rate down to 5.375. So it's going to be at 5.375 for the first 12 months, 6.375 after. The cost to do that is approximately $11,000. So I'm going to pull my worksheet up here and show you that. Can you see that? You got the worksheet up? I can't tell. Uh, not yet, no. All right, give me a second. Let me switch it. Sorry, guys. My computer's frozen. Give me one second here. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to anybody put I'm going to put my email inside the notes or in, in the chat here in a second. You can contact me. I'll email you this calculator. So you can run this. Based off the based off the loan we did in November, we were able to take that loan down to five point three seven five percent. The total cost and seller credits we had to get to do that was eleven thousand two hundred fifty eight dollars. The importance with showing this to you right now is that. You're saving the borrower $620 a month the first 12 months. How many people would like to get into a home today with rates from where they were six or 12 months ago or six, eight months ago, rough, roughly? This is going to get your buyers back off the fence. Now, a lot of people will say, okay, well, why don't we just get a sell? Why don't we get a seller concession as far as lowering the price or whatever that may be to try to, to try to get a better deal? I'm going to show you how much you have to lower the price to make that happen. All right. So this, to, to lower the price to get the same payment difference, you had to lower the sale price from $475 to $395. I know we have a lot of strong realtors on here right now, but wouldn't it be easier to get $11,000 seller credit or seller concession than lowering the price $80,000? <laughs> right? So one of the biggest questions we get asked when, when we're doing the 2-1 buy-down presentation is, oh, well, Chris, we're, we're being told rates are going to go down in the next 6 to 12 months. We, we believe that. And I'll give you some more information on that in a minute. We believe that rates are going to continue to go down. The cool thing about a 2-1 buy-down is that money goes into an escrow account. 
If they refinance, sell it, pay off early before that two and buy downs up, that money goes credits to the principal on the loan. They get that money back. It doesn't go away. If you get seller credit, you use it to buy the interest rate down and they pay off early, they don't get that money back. That money's gone forever. This is a strategy that we've really been aggressive with over the last probably 180 days. And it's worked very well for us in this market in Central Florida. We had four, we actually had four new deals come in today with this, with this program on it. If your lender's not sharing this with you or helping you figure out a different strategy than just giving you a 30-year fixed rate, you need to find somebody else to help you with that. But I will provide you with this two one buy down calculator so you can run the numbers yourself. You can go in and present those offers to, you know, from the buyer side to the listing side, or even we're having a lot of our list our listing agents we work with go ahead and and go ahead and show that they'll do a two one buy down on the MLS. Okay. And that's getting some traction. It's getting more people out there that aren't afraid as much of, of the rate. Look, I've been in this industry a long time. I've sold rates as high as 9%. We can sell any rate if they stay consistent. The issue we're having right now is one day they're 7.5%, then they're 6%, then they're 7%. And all of a sudden, all of the, everybody's falling in and out of being pre-approved or their budget's not where it wants to be. The good news is we're seeing some stability on the horizon. Okay, I'm going to share something. I'm going to share one more thing with you here real quick, then I'll take some questions. Um, All right, so this is like some big time insider information here. So uh, I share this with Troy on our coaching calls from time to time. So this is MBS Highway. This, this shows information as far as data is concerned with the pricing of mortgage-backed securities. Mortgage-backed securities is what we use to sell interest rates on mortgages. So when a mortgage is sold a 30-year fixed, it's packaged up and sold as a mortgage-backed security to investors. Now, as you see, the UMBS 30 or 5.5%, that calculates to roughly a six and a quarter rate today. I'm going to just show you the trend lines. I won't go into super deep here, but I am going to put my contact information there. You can call me. I'm happy to run through all this with you because I could, I'm like super nerd on this stuff. Troy and I geek out all the time on this stuff. So I could go for a couple hours here with you. Um, some people may fall asleep, but if you notice the trend lines here, we're staying pretty consistent. We had a little bit of a blip around Christmas, December, and then we're trending back up. When those CPI numbers are released tomorrow, I believe they're going to be a somewhere around three tenths of a percent year over year increase. A year ago, it was six tenths of a percent. So if we're only up three tenths of a percent, we're going to get some really good positive movement for interest rates. This Fibonacci line right here, we break through that. We're into some really good sailing. This is a 200-day moving average here. So the last time rates were this good was 200 days ago. Does anybody on the call want a rate from 200 days ago? I know I do. I know <laughs> I do. So we really need some stability in that market. We get there, we get some stability. You're going to see a great opportunity on the as far as the lending side is concerned to help you get more buyers and houses. What's happening right now is we're seeing what's called margin compression. Margin compression is where the end investor mortgage backs people buy mortgage backed securities, they don't want to buy any higher coupons. So what happens is is traditionally I can charge you a higher rate, we can make a bigger spread, we're able to give credits back, that type of stuff. Right now, those higher rates are paying the same as say a six and a quarter rate, seven's paying the same because they don't want anybody to have that. They don't want to be able to refinance. There's such a risk of refinance right now in this market that the investors are afraid. Um, I couldn't believe, and I knew this was right, but th that we were up 2.87% year over year. Now I know why we were down as a company last in the last six, last six months of the year. I want you to look at your numbers from the previous, from last year, 2022, and say that you had, it was two separate years. It was two separate years. I did my quarterly partner meeting today. The first six months of the year was one year. The next six months was a different year because those were two totally different markets. So we're going to give you the tools to be able to navigate and grow through that. And this is just a quick snippet of what we have to offer as far as 
giving you information from Olive Coaching. Good stuff, Chris. Let me, uh, we've got a few questions in here. Uh, let me go back. Emily, Emily said, uh, what are your thoughts on assumable mortgages right now? Uh, worth worth asking about just heard VA loans can be assumed by non VA buyers. No clue if that's true. Know anything about that? I don't know on that part of the non VA buyer um, assumable loans, but I uh, but we have seen some assumability going on right now with some of the loans in the market that are in that three percent range. Um, but I the ones that I've been involved with we're, we're requiring some significant cash to the seller as well along with that assumable mortgage, right? They were, they, were, they were dictating, hey, I need so much of my equity um, to get out of there. Gotcha. And, and just like Troy, the value is in knowing the numbers. Would you agree? No, there's no doubt about it. I mean, we, we do face-to-face -face consultations with all of our clients and go over all this information. Some people don't want to see it. They don't care what's the payment. Let's go on and go about it. But as certified mortgage planners, we look at it a little bit differently. We want to help you build a wealth a wealth building strategy by using the right mortgage program to do that. And we're just, we're really dialed in as experts in the field in our current market. And as we're expanding into the Midwest and into like South Carolina, Tennessee area as well. So what would you say to uh, 71 people on here? I would imagine the majority of them are all real estate professionals, realtors, somehow way, shape or form, whether it's in a leadership position, whether it's in a an individual sales role, owning a team, owning a brokerage. What would you say to, to all of those people related to your world and, and their mindset right now, right? Their mindset, just like Troy talked about, you know, yeah. the news can can manipulate the, the narrative there. Um, what would you say? What would you say to the, you're coaching someone and, and what would you say to their mindset? How would you coach their mindset right now? You know, I'm a positive guy and I, I look at tons of opportunity in any market, you know, just like what we talked about earlier, this market's hard. Well, you know what the hardest market I've ever worked in from my side of the business was during COVID. Mm. I worked seven days a week, 14 hours a day, running pipelines, doing everything I could to get loans closed. This is just a different version of hard. There's it's, this industry is not easy. It's always hard. Just depends what the hard is. And mm. right now, mindset is just, is a big deal. And for me, I'm, I, I work very hard every day to be dialed in with my mindset. So if I'm coaching somebody, we're going to figure out where those gaps are and why the mindset isn't, where isn't giving them the results that they want. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Anybody else? I'll open it up for questions here with, um, with, with Chris in the lending space. You can type in the chat or you can just unmute yourself. Uh, here we go. We got, um, Chris, when do you think that you will serve the Chicago area? <laughs> um, Chicago is a little bit tougher as far as getting licensing in that market. It's not on my calendar for at least until probably third quarter of this year. We just got approved in Ohio the other day. Um, South Carolina should be next week. Um, we're in Colorado. And I mean, we've been a central Florida based company since 1999 and just decided to expand outside those markets. Gotcha. Uh, Question. And, oh, go for it. Yes. Uh, so with um, inflation on the possibility of going down and is there a recession possibly looming? What would be like the expectations with the recession, interest rates, inflation going down? How would that all play out in the next like six months? Great question. I don't, I don't have the, 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 the uh, crystal ball, but let me show you what we consider a definition of a recession on the lending side. And just so you know, we feel that we've been in a recession for about seven months. Just, just FYI that the media doesn't want to tell us we're in a recession, but the key market indicator for us in lending to determine a recession is this. Here's a 10 year treasury. When you have an inverted yield curve where a two-year treasury is paying you a higher return than a 10-year, that's considered a recession. As you can see, we're roughly 68 basis points spread between the 10-year and the two-year. So what that tells you is people are more interested in investing short-term because of recessionary, recessionary pressures in the market. So those are paying higher returns. Okay. So we have felt we've been in a recession for the long time. Historically speaking, recessions create better interest rates, 
We do a lot better in, in the lending industry during a recessionary market. The media has just been kicking the can on this forever and the powers to be saying we are not in a recession. Every category that qualifies for a recession, we're there. We're there. So we really feel confident that interest rates are going to drop into the fives, barring any crazy thing that may happen. You know, the war has a lot of pressure on us from, from Ukraine, but barring anything else, we feel confident that end of, end of Q1, we're going to be back in the 5% range and it'll stay kind of flatlined upper fours, low fives throughout the rest of the year. That's all the information I have as far as crunching the numbers and getting information from a guy named Barry Habib, who's like the Yoda of the interest rate market. So Chris, one of the questions I'd be asking if I was, you know, I'm an agent, you know, and a coach and in real estate is one of the questions I'm going to see what your answer is on it. What percent of people actually refi their rates within five years? Percentage people refi in five years. I, I don't know what that stat is off the top of my head, Jeremy. I know that the numbers are com completely skewed right now because interest rates got so low for yep. 20, 20, 2021. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what that data is. In, so from I, previous I years, I've found and was told that it's very, very high. I've heard some really crazy high numbers that this is not a rate they're going to stick with for 30 years. So if they do buy, yeah, now, I mean, there's not pretty. yeah, I mean, the majority of home, the majority of homes are, or the data that I have, the majority of homes are either sold or refinanced within the first seven years. Exactly. There you go. Okay. So, um, and and with the amount of equity we have currently, all that most homeowners have, and I know this isn't on the sales side for real estate as far as the the refi part's concerned, but we feel there's going to be another massive refi boom next over the next year to 18 months because of the amount of equity we have in a lot of markets now i know we have some markets that don't see that but i'll share you a stat that we had on our report this morning for our year end my average loan size went up year over year 18 percent. so it went up from 284,346,000. that's a pretty big increase in number and obviously our loan officers and anybody in the, the real estate industry is paid off of sale price and loan amount so I can close a few less loans and we make similar money because of the increase. And I know you you guys are the same as well. Yeah, great stuff. great stuff. All right. If you guys have any more questions for Chris or Troy, put them in the chat because now we're going to open this up to winning strategies. And if I can have the coaches pinned, uh, can is that possible to pin all the coaches? Because what I want to do now is uh, we might just be able to pin two people at a time. I, I don't know how that works. No, I'm pinning them all right now. Yeah, thank <clears throat> yeah. you. Uh, coaches, let's have a conversation here. Let's talk to all 72 people that are on here. Again, the majority are in the real estate world, and we coach many real estate professionals, leaders. Uh, let's see, we're missing one. Where's Mr. Brian Leverett? I wonder if he's wearing blue or black today. What do we got, Brian? You got yep, blue or black on? Looks like black. It's black. Adam, is, is this everybody that you wanted, Adam? It is, yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Stay ready. Ready. What, what's that shirt say? It's just stay ready. Stay ready for whatever. Stay time. ready. And that's why we're having a real conversation right now is to help everyone stay ready. <laughs> so let's talk about some winning strategies, right? As you're sitting there coaching your clients, as you're, by the way, I'm going to be really transparent here for all the people that are on. If you don't have a coach, you better get a coach. Okay. Because right now, as Terrell said, as the coaches said, this is a skills-based market and all the coaches will tell you that. And the resources that these coaches have to provide is second to none. Okay. So with that being said, coaches, let's share some winning strategies. How are you coaching up your clients right now in the real estate space to win the first quarter? Anybody can go. To go first. I'll go first on two angles. We'll go team leaders if you're in leadership. Number one, know your statistics from last year. So focus on it. So I was just coaching someone. They have to increase their numbers by 25%. So their goal was to set 10 appointments per week, which was 200 dials. So there are 20 dials per one appointment. What we found that wasn't good enough. Why? Cancel rate, cancellation rates were up. They used to have cancellation rates at 30%. Their cancellation rates went to 50%. I had another one at 70%. So they went from 200 phone calls to 250 phone calls. Guess what we found out in the first 30, day, first 30 days? They started hitting their numbers again. 
So this is like what, you know, and this is a coaching call is early December. So now we're mid, we're almost mid January. It worked. Second on the real estate realtor side, same thing, knowing your statistics, knowing your numbers, where you're getting your business from. What we're focused on center of influence. The majority of people I'm meeting right now in the brokerage is we're meeting people that literally need to get business from a center of influence. I would say over 90% of the business is coming from center of influence. I'm seeing very little success rates from cold business. And we did $3 billion out of two offices last year. So we have a good pool of business coming through. So we're coaching them on getting their database cleaned up, which we have a company for that, and then getting them set up on a 33 touch system. Nice. Yeah, I, I think that obviously knowing your numbers are huge. I'm really big into setting that goal for the, for the year, but then breaking it down to quarterly, monthly, and weekly. And then that goal turns into what I call my daily standards. And what are my daily standards? I have to do X, Y, and Z every day as a standard, and then it just becomes a routine. And what you'll find is you'll blow away past your goal because I stopped thinking about the outcome more on me getting my daily routine done on a regular basis. So if we raise our standards, not focus as much on the goal, just like Jeremy said, know your numbers, you're going to be amazed on what you're able to accomplish. Now, when it comes to having a coach, coach has been life-changing for me. I mean, there's a lot of things that have happened throughout my life, all the way from youth sports, all the way into business. And I wouldn't have been able to achieve the things I have without a coach. And I'm not selling, telling this because, oh, you should hire Chris Welton as a coach. I'm talking about in general. It's hard for people that are leaders in front of you every day for you to buy into their advice. It's hard for them to be a prophet in their own town. So what I do is I take, I invest myself into a coach outside of that because I want to get raw break the numbers down, but get raw with them on what I'm really feeling and, and what I need to understand to grow my business. And not just the business aspect of it, but the whole life aspect of it. And I'll give crazy kudos to Adam. He's my coach. My life in the last 15, 16 months has evolved immensely because my coach has held me accountable in some uncomfortable ways, but he's pushed me to be a better person on every level that I wanted to accomplish it on. So that's, I mean, it, and I have, I invest, they say you should invest at least 10% of your income back into yourself every year with conferences and coaching. You do not want to know what I put in last year with all the stuff I did. And if my wife was on here, I definitely would not be admitting that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Keep it coming, yeah. coaches. Keep it coming. Yeah, I agree. Uh, thanks, Chris and Jeremy. I totally agree with you. And a lot of realtors aren't, I, I would say, natural at the numbers, right? Obviously, Troy, you are. Chris, you are because you're you're living in the numbers. Um, but being really specific. So I had a client who decided there were certain things that she needed to track daily, some things she wanted to track weekly, and then she had them rolling up to the monthly. So it's not just the conversation. So for example, she was looking to increase her sales price and in order to increase her sales price, she needed to hang out with people who were in that sales price. So she, was, she made a goal of once a week meeting with new construction contacts once a week. And so you're so right, right now more than ever, we've been so spoiled the last couple of years or really honestly, anybody who's joined this business you know, the last 10 years, we don't know how much we have to focus on those numbers right now and be very purposeful and drill down to what is important to you. So I echo the numbers and the tracking. That's good. Now, curious, Kim, I want to stay on you for a second. So when you say drill down to you, break that down, right? What, 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 what does that mean as you have a as you have one of your clients get drilled down, what, what are you doing with them? Just out of curiosity. Well, we're getting really deep on what their goal is, um, what the reality is, right? The reality on what it takes to get to that goal. Is it something that you need to do or is it something that you need to stop doing? That's a reality. Sometimes we need to stop doing something. And then we also look into what's the obstacle. I have a prime example. I had a client who said her obstacle was she liked working from home and her husband works at home with her. 
The obstacle was her husband because they were sitting at the kitchen table working together and he was constantly interrupting her. That was the obstacle, you guys. And so she had to go buy a desk, put it in another space. That's a big one. I had another one where a client had an obstacle of, oh, what she realized the reality was she wasn't lead genning, making her contacts. The obstacle was her and her husband were staying up late watch, binge watching Netflix. So you gotta really know what is your obstacle. And so a coach can help you find that. It's not always what you think it is. And then what we do as coaches here at I Love Coaching is that we're looking for the way forward. The way forward is an action. And so that's part of why we're here today as experts, right? Uh, strategies for winning is you got to really know that and you can't always see your own shit, if I can say it out loud here. You cannot see all that yourself. I can't see that. I've had a coach since early 2000s. I've been in this business for 25 years. I don't see my own crap. And that's what they'll find for you. And right now, pish posh, what's happening on in the news or what other agents are saying, you guys, this is your time to go take market share if you focus and you know what you need to do. And so that's that's where we're going with that. That's good. That's really, really good. Uh, I, I trust that my wife was not listening to that statement there that the husband can be a distraction. I, she's probably not paying attention right now. So that was really good. And she won't watch the recording. <laughs> I am paying attention. Oh, Thank you is. very much. Yeah. Okay. I want to switch gears here uh, from, from, from going to, um, you know, the, the, the tactical approach. I want to know, coaches, what, what are you seeing or limiting beliefs right now? Brian, I know that this is a big wheelhouse of yours is helping people get over limiting beliefs. And everyone that's on here, guess what? We all have our own limiting beliefs one way, shape or another. So what are we seeing are some of our clients limiting beliefs and how are we helping them get over or what are we suggesting that they do to get over those limiting beliefs? So we're not spending enough time um, focusing on ourselves and what we're good at. We're spending a lot of time focusing on the market, right? Anytime you invest studying the market, I would suggest you double or triple that investment in terms of time and money on focusing on yourself and your business. It does you no good, uh, Adam, to know the market better than you know yourself or your business, right? Because knowledge isn't power. Knowledge with action is power. So the biggest limiting beliefs I'm seeing right now is clients, my clients, they don't know what they're good at. They haven't stopped to say, what are, where am I strong, right? And what pieces of my business are strong? Where are my weaknesses, my opportunities, and my threats, right? They haven't unpacked it and removed themselves from their, from their own business to look down and say, what's working well, right? That's the first limiting belief is they don't give that any thought or consideration. So we have to stop there and go, hang on. First of all, remember who you are. Let's, we have to have data. Jeremy says, know your numbers. Chris says, know your numbers. Numbers are just a representation of something that happened, right? That's all it is. It's a relationship to something that happened. So we have to find out what's happening in your business that you're good at. And we need to double down on those things. I've got one client who went from two years ago from two client events to six, right? Because she was really good at them. She's good at following up on them. She enjoys them. Her unit count from those, Adam, also went from 12 to 32, right? That she can track back to that, right? So the first thing on removing limiting beliefs is we're telling ourselves a story, right? We have to inspect that story and we have to drill down, what am I good at that I can double down on, right? And we need to start there, right? The second thing that we need to look at with limiting beliefs is we need to say, what am I currently not doing that if I did start doing could drastically change my business, right? This is about possibilities. It's not about limitations, okay? But the number one thing I see is we don't know what we're good at, which is a shame. Right. So I'm helping my clients discover where their skill sets lie. Where are they strong? Let's go double down on that while we learn everything else. That's real good. Who else? Leave Brian, I love the story part. I mean, it's the it the stories we tell ourselves we wouldn't put up with anybody else telling us those stories. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I had a gentleman in my office yesterday I was coaching, and he was so worried about the process well, my process needs to be more dialed in i'm like you go get enough leads and i'll figure the process out for you like he's slowed himself down by my process has to be perfect this has to be perfect 
If you don't have any leads, it doesn't matter what your process is. So let's go get some leads and make that happen. And I, I love the, you know, we, we talk about this all the time, the pyramid of questions and people are always asking themselves, why me or why not me? Okay, well, how can it be me? What can I do to change that? And who do I need to emulate or who do I need to hire as a coach or who do I need to listen to podcasts or whatever to change my trajectory? And too many people are listening to the news or the negative or the neighbor that's telling them things are bad. Yeah. There's so much opportunity out there, positivity, things you can listen to, people who've been there and done that. If you've ever seen me speak before on any of these events, you'll know I'm a king of R&D, which is rip off and duplicate. I have yeah. no problem in taking something you've done well and repurposing it. Okay. So if you see somebody in your office that's crushing it, go find out what they're doing and do the same thing. But do the same thing. Exactly right. I, I say this all the time is we get so attached to the goals, right? We're first of all, we're experts in setting goals and planning. Like at this point, we are all experts in that we do it every fourth quarter. It's the most attended class ever business planning clinic. We love setting goals, but then we focus on those goals all year. And what happens, Chris? They wear us down right? Ambition runs out. Willpower is not on will call. And we forget that life is happening every day. Business is happening every day. And the goals don't actually matter. They're just there to reverse engineer a plan of the activities that we're going to participate in daily, which is life, by the way, guys. And so we start to chase a business. We start to chase a life that doesn't exist instead of creating a business and creating a life that we want today, which are just a list of activities. Who are we and what do we do? right? Yeah. You are your calendar. So we need to get detached from the goal. The goal just reverse engineers the plan. Then we need to make real decisions. And people always say, hey, don't take it personally. I don't agree with that. I think you should take everything personally because then you can own what's happening in your life, right? And I think every day needs a, a very well-executed plan on who you are and what you need to do today to get the business and the life that you want. And I just don't know that we're focused enough on, on a daily basis on who we are and what we need to do to have the life we want today, not in a yeah. year, not in three quarters, right now. Well, and, and, and here's the thing about Brian, when you talk about the goals and breaking down like that, like I said before, the standards, right? We have standards. Do we all have a standard to brush our teeth every day? Everybody? I know I do, right? So <laughs> shouldn't you have a standard to make your calls? Shouldn't you have a standard to go to the gym? Shouldn't you have a standard to eat right? Shouldn't you have a standard to do your face-to-faces, your belly-to-bellies, whatever that is to achieve that end goal? We brush our teeth as a standard so we don't get cavities. Why don't we have the same? Why don't we look at everything else the same as those standards? You're going to get massive results when you break it down daily. And these are my standards. This is what I do every day. Like Brian said, let's don't think about the outcome. Let go of the outcome. And you're going to, you're going to blow your mind on what you're able to accomplish in 12 months. Well, we're just not being and 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 right now enough about that question if 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 i give you my calendar from the last 30 days chris that's who i am i can say to you all day who i am i can pretend that i'm somebody else but whatever i did on those days in that moment that's who i was so if i'm coaching i'm a coach if i'm training for an ultra race i'm an ultra runner but i am whatever i did i'm not what i think i did and so i like to take it personally and i like to tell my clients to take it personally i challenge them to who are you today and what do you need to do that's in alignment with who you say you are, right? So a lot of freedom in that discipline, right? So we went over the market. We got to focus on who we are today and the activities for today that win. Yep, I agree. Jeremy, you want to say something? I'm going to transition. Yeah, on. so drop in the chat line, everybody. Um, rate your effort one to 10 last year. 10 meaning you gave it your all, you were 100%. Drop in the chat line right now, one to 10. What was your effort last year? I'm going to read them. Here we go. If I can keep up with everybody. We got a three, a six, an eight, a five, a seven, a seven, an eight, an eight, a seven, a six, a two, a seven, a seven, and five, five, eight, six, five, five. five. All right. Second part. Watch us, guys, is we're going to reinvent yourself for 2023. What is the one thing that got in your way from getting that number up by two to three? What's one thing that got in your way by two to three points? I was a five. How many get to an eight? I was a five and trying to get to a seven. I'm a seven trying to get to a nine. 
Okay, hold on. Let me read some of these. Uh, myself, my wife, who said that? Uh, me, me, mindset, saying yes to too many things, my head, consistency, me, stop me, consistency, distractions uh, became my priorities. Adam is in trouble. <laughs> Burnout, focus. Yes, he is. Doing too many things. Nine to five, finally quit. Staying in my head and systems and processes, Jeremy. Okay, next step. Do you guys realize you have life cycles we're all living right now? We just started a new life cycle, most likely. It's five-year life cycles. Look at your wealth five years ago. Look at your life now. It's probably drastically different. The good news is we're about to start a new life. So whatever happened in the last five years, if you did great, good for you. If you did poor, who cares? So track what you're doing right now as a group and focus on what you're doing every single day. Piece of paper and pen, track what you're doing. And then the last part is start doing the things that make you money and outsource the rest. Whatever makes you money, do it. If you, I want to make a million bucks. I know right now, I can tell you right away, 2739 a day, 2739 a day. Jeremy Bauer is going to make $2,700 and $2,739 a day. Whatever your goal is, you have to understand what you have to do and get the noise out of the way. And if you're having trouble with that, you need a coach. All of us have coaches, tennis coaches, business coaches, whatever it is. And what you're going to find is you won't figure this out on your own. I need Adam or Ken to call me out. I'm a coach. I've been doing this for 19 years. I manage $3 billion a year. Everybody thinks everybody has their stuff together. There's always another level that you guys need to do. We need to do as humans. Who's your coach going to help you figure out that messy middle to get there? And I'm going to leave you with one last point. Remember this. It's from a really good book. Start with Why by Simon Sinek. Top five most impactful books of all time. All the coaching calls have been on. What do you want? How are you going to get there? What's your why? What do you want? How are you going to get there? What's your why? That messy how, that's where your coach comes in. That how is the five people you hang out the most with. It's going to help you get there. Think about that. What's that worth to you? That's good. Hey, let's let's finish with this, you guys. Um, and, and we can have engagement from everybody. I'd love to see it in the chat. What tools... Are you suggesting your clients use uh, to, again, stay on track with whatever it is they're tracking to, to measure themselves and their progress against time, if you will? What, what specific tracking tools are you guys working through? What, what are you doing in that space to keep everybody focused and engaged in their growth? Adam, do you mean what, what are you're asking yeah. these coaches, what yep. tools they're asked so yep. that the agents that are on right now can decipher whether they're using those tools or not? Exactly. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I was just say it one more clarifying. time. Lost me, buddy. Uh, 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 Dana, you tell, tell them that again. I almost said, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so you do need me. Okay. Does everybody, I just want to make sure everybody heard that. <laughs> um, I was just saying, no, I think what Adam's saying is what tools should these people, should agents and these, not agents, should these business owners be using um, so that they can have their best year and they can do all the things that we just talked about and they can get to their 10 instead of all the fives and sixes that we saw and all those things that got in the way. Like for me, it's the living or dying by the 411. Yeah, well said. So what do you, what do you coaches, what, what are you suggesting? What are you using? The, the simplest, the simplest tool for goal setting and progress and habit tracking that I found is the one through five and the four one one. Right. Mm -hmm. when, when the one three five starts with a real goal that they have an attachment to, and they're actually going through and listing their priorities and their strategies, that's what shapes the four one one. Which Dana, you can plug that if you want. You your uh, team members teaches a class on this, but it's reverse engineering the plan, right, Adam? It it, it takes a little bit to do that. But um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of value in it because now we know that the activities, let me rephrase this. What if you can wake up every single day knowing that whatever you did today, as long as you did it, it would hit your yearly goal. You don't have to worry about the yearly goal. What if you had clarity that every single day, the activities that you were doing that day allowed you to fail forward towards your goal? 
You don't have to think about it. You don't have to guesswork. There's just no thought in that at all. You just show up and you just do the thing. How liberating is that to know that every day you're doing the things that you need to do and you don't have to worry about creating or reinventing the wheel. Gosh, I mean, the energy freed up from being able to operate that well, you can't even measure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. What are the tools? Um, I would start with your personal life. I believe it all starts personal, not in your business. So you got to get your, your house organized, your family, yourself, whoever that is. And you got to track when you're going to bed, when you're eating, when you're getting up. It's the first thing I work on with everybody. So track what you do personally, writing it down. It's called a pen and paper. Don't overcomplicate it. <laughs> Figure out where your bad habits are. And then we're going to build barriers around it. For me, I dropped 40 pounds. I realized I went out too much, socialized too much, chased too much business, had too many beers. And I had to put tennis around it. So I started playing tennis Thursday night, Saturday mornings at seven o'clock, Sunday morning at seven o'clock, weight dropped off. So figure out what's in your life personally getting in your way. And then from a business perspective, I would use something that works for you only. Don't overcomplicate it. I built out a custom software just because I couldn't find what I wanted. It took me years and years to figure out what I wanted. And I did some. I would not recommend it up front. I would just use something very, very simple. I love a 411, just like he said and figure out what your goals are. Use something that you're gonna use. Don't use something because Jeremy Bowers, Chris, Ken, Troy, Adam like it. Use something that you'll actually use. You can get a gym membership, but if you don't go to the gym, who cares? Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, go. I, lo I love that, the simplicity, right? And so whatever it is you're tracking, less is more, less is more. So there can be some really complicated Google Sheets, spreadsheets, whatever. There's power in the number. But what is it that you are going to actually be okay doing it? And everybody might be different to get to the end result. I'd say the other thing, you guys, I noticed in the chat when we asked, you know, what the number was. Thank you for that activity, Jeremy. Then we asked, you know, well, what was holding you back or why didn't you get to that number? There was a whole lot of mindset, myself, mindset. And so starting your day with getting your mindset right can change everything, everything. And so a new tool that I'm using this year, um, I actually got it from a podcast that Hal Elrod led, uh, the Miracle Morning author. And he was interviewing somebody who wrote the book. I can't remember his name, but the two minute morning. And so literally you can take two minutes at the beginning of your day and write down three things. I will let go of, I am grateful for, and I will focus on. I will let go of that crazy buyer that walked away and ended up buying with somebody else in an open house. I will let go of um, my mom who's driving me nuts or whatever. It doesn't matter. I will let go of that listing that I didn't get. I will let go of that presentation where I messed up. Get the crap out of your head. Mind share. Secondly, I'm grateful for, be very specific. I'm grateful for my warm cup of coffee or the first time I you know, get my coffee out of my machine and it's frothy. I'm grateful for my husband because X, Y, Z, specific. And then I will focus on, we can lose mindshare with that list that's forever. We all have them, we're business owners, you guys. Whether you're a realtor, whether you're leading a team, whatever it is, pick something and just say, I will focus on so you get something done. I'll focus on scheduling the oil change. Maybe you're, I'll focus on scheduling the dentist appointment. I'll focus on, oh, I don't know, just getting the stamps on those notes. Mind share and get your mind right. And then I believe all the rest will come. Love it. Fantastic. Uh, uh, for, for me, I, I'm really big with a daily routine. I've got a, a, a routine I do every day. I, I run through um, meditation every day. I read every morning. I do these things. That's my standard. It's done every morning before I get anything else going. Gets my mind right and ready to go. I use a thing called the power list. It's five things that I need to get done every day. But again, these work. Everybody's different on this call. So not what I may do may not work, but maybe it does. And focusing on having those wins early in the day, stacking a few wins right out of the gate, gets me the momentum on the trajectory I need to take on challenges. So later in the day, when I'm faced with this loan that just blew up because the guy didn't tell me about his child support or whatever that is, I'm mentally ready to handle that because I prepped myself in the morning taking care of it. And 
those are the steps that I use. I, I'm a real big at time blocking. I make sure I live and die by my time block. And I was coaching a guy yesterday. He's like, well, if I time block, there's no time left for myself. Wrong. Now you have time for yourself. And I literally have, I'm looking at my calendar right now. I've, I have date night Friday night. I've got everything time blocked in there. I know what, what I have to do. And, and today's the 11th of the month. And I've bought my wife flowers on the 11th of the month, every month for almost 10 and a half years. So I got to stop and get flowers on the way home tonight. But now my time block, I'm in trouble when I get home. Right. So <laughs> but it, whatever works for you is what's going to work. These are just some of the ideas. And, and, and I trust me, I went through tons of stuff to figure out what worked for me. And it is simple is easier for me. I'm not a super tech guy. I don't know how Jeremy built his own software or whatever. I can't, I still play Atari, so I'm not a software guy. Um, but you know, if that works for you, then jump in. Love it. All right. Great job coaches. Great job, everybody in the chat. And we're going to close this way. So I just put in the chat. I love coachingco.com. I want you to go there. If you are interested in having a coach, well, let me rephrase that. When you hire a coach, I want you to go there because you're going to get an, you're going to get a coaching call for free. If you're on this, you go in there and when you push that button, free coaching call, make sure you put in real talk. That's all I want you to put is real talk and we'll connect you with one of these coaches for a free coaching call. And then I want you to do this. This is going to be a new series that we are creating. This is called the Real Talk series. I'm going like to stay for a few more minutes and say hi to the kiddos. All right. Tell the kiddos to say hi. And this right here. I swore I wasn't going to stay. I swore I was going to listen to that damn Zoom. <laughs> so I swore I was going to listen to I'm trying to, my to find, but I'm not. Zoom I can't find it. Take this QR code. Oh, and this is the registration for sure the sure next QR code. Oh. Um, did you get it? Hello? Got it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Founder. Good job. Got it. Thank you. So here's your QR code to go uh, register for our next Real Talk next month. This is going to be what do coaches do when they go to events and come back and take action? So that's what that series is going to be about next time. So go use that QR code right now. Go register for that. And again, I love coachingco.com and go get your free coaching call. Make sure you put in there Real Talk. That's all we have for you, everybody. Thank you for your time, energy, and effort today. Coaches, thank you for your time, energy, and effort. We're grateful for you all, and we'll see you on the flip side. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. That was hilarious. That was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I love it. Thank you, Adam. That was great. <laughs> so we're still all here. We're all we're still all just hanging out. Oh, yeah, we're all just hanging out. I'm not done. Was, see ya. <laughs>